So next we're going to look at some, uh, sources of bias. Uh, bias is a, a systematic distortion of your statistical results, which come from something influencing the data. Now, one version of this we've sort of already talked about, and that would be what's called, uh, sampling bias. Uh, and sampling bias is what you get when your sample is not actually representative of your population. Uh, and then the data that you collect from your sample can't really be trusted, and it has a, it's distorted because it is not representing the population that you're actually trying to talk about. Let's look at some other cases. So, consider a recent study which found that chewing gum may help raise math grades in teenagers. This study was conducted by the Wrigley Science Institute, a branch of the Wrigley Chewing Gum Company. Uh, what potential source of bias should we be concerned about here? And you're probably jumping on the fact right away that this is saying gum is good, uh, from a study done by a gum company. Uh, this is called a, uh, or our concern here is a self interest study. This is called a self-interest study where the person conducting the research has an interest in the result, in this case a financial interest. Now that does not necessarily mean that the data is invalid or that the study is invalid. There has been a lot of very valid research done by companies with an interest in the study. Certainly all pharmaceutical research is done by uh, a self-interested party. But it certainly means that we should look at the results with an additional level of skepticism and really dig down to make sure that the results that they're providing are valid. So suppose we have a survey that asks people, when was the last time you visited the doctor? Uh, what should we be concerned about here? And the big concern here is something called, something called response bias something called response bias, and this is when the responder, uh, gives inaccurate responses for any of a variety of reasons. In this case, it's probably, uh, a memory issue where, you know, somebody might not remember, uh, the last time they visited the doctor and might think it was, you know, two months ago when it was, in fact, you know, seven months ago. And so this is a bias. Now, some of these are sort of intentional nefariousness, uh, you know, like a self-interest study, we might be concerned about intentional, um, you know, d deception. But oftentimes, these biases are not intentional, um, and in response bias is certainly one of those. So suppose that we, a survey asks participants a question about their interactions with members of other races, you know, how they, how well they get along with, uh, you know, black people or Asians. Um, what would we be concerned about here? Now here we have something called a perceived, perceived lack of anonymity. In other words, if uh, particularly if this was g being given in a face-to-face, -face, um, um, interview process, the person who's being asked might, um, particularly if they have, you know, racial biases, they might, uh, be uncomfortable sharing that because they don't want to be perceived as racist. Uh, and so they may, um, be uninclined to give an, uh, to give a accurate answer. So now, uh, suppose a survey asks, uh, do you support funding research of alternative energy sources to reduce our reliance on high polluting fossil fuels? Uh, so the sort of the bias issue here is something called a loaded or leading question. Uh, so this question is considered to be a loaded question because the wording, this high polluting fossil fuels, uh, sort of leads the respondent towards an answer. I mean, you read this and you say, oh, high polluting fossil fuels, I don't like those. Uh, so yeah, of course I support funding research. Uh, whereas if the question said something like, do you support funding research of alternative energy sources re which may incre uh, which will be funded through increases in gas taxes, uh, chances are a lot more people would say no to that question. So let's look at the next one here. A, a telephone poll, uh, to asks, uh, asks the question, uh, do you, do you often have time to relax and read a book? And 50% of the people called refused to answer the survey. Uh, so the issue here is something called, uh, oops, it's called non-response bias. 
In this case, the issue is that people aren't responding to the question, and when we, particularly when the question is like, do you have time to relax, if half the people are not even answering the question, uh, chances are this is going to influence the accuracy of your study, because the people who answer are probably going to be the people who actually have time to answer studies and surveys like this. So one last one, to determine how long it takes to hit the brakes when an animal runs in front of the car, a uh, hundred college students are recruited and put through a simulator. So the issue here goes back to where we started. This is what's called sampling bias. And it really depends upon who our target uh, population was here. But if we're really figuring out, trying to figure out how long it takes people, where this is just sort of a generic people, uh, then using college students as our sample uh, is probably going to slant the results, because college students are probably going to have a higher, quicker reaction time than, uh, than s some other Americans, such as, um, you know, senior citizens. And so, this, pro this sample is probably not representative of the population and is probably going to skew those results.